Hello everybody, uh, this is going to be the first of my US series videos. We are going to talk about uh, the nuclear cliff, uh, the fact that the, the US is about to lose a lot of its nuclear capacity, um, in total 173 terawatt hours of clean air, air electricity production per year with a combined uh, capacity of uh, 23 gigawatts and a capacity factor of 89 percent now you already see highlighted in red indian point three uh, two and three now uh, this plant has been shut down just recently and as you can see it's a large power plant 2080 megawatts with a capacity factor of 92 percent and a total annual production of 17 terawatt hours per year um now it, it produces about 12 percent 13 percent of new york's uh the state new york's uh um, electricity production and this is a, a, a huge amount now what are they doing to offset the loss of this power plant they are building natural gas plants and i will show them later to you so that you so that you can see for yourself that they are doing it you can see the construction yard and everything now why is this happening there is a conflux of problems here most of the state legislators don't understand how valuable these nuclear power plants are and so they don't create policy to defend the to to maintain these nuclear power stations in the meanwhile the power companies themselves they they they, they simply they simply view these power plants as assets that need to uh that need to deliver that need to be profitable and that profit margin has been under some strain uh, ever since uh, cheap natural gas came onto the market in the US and lots of wind and solar uh, came onto the market with uh, um, uh, sales guarantees and, 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 and other things that meant that you got a lot of um, price fluctuations. Um, and in the end, the bottom line uh became lower and lower and lower which meant that making a profit running a nuclear power plant became harder and harder and harder so most of these plants are being shut down for economic reasons simply because they are not profitable enough um and this is this is really really a bad thing um this does not show their actual value in the struggle against uh carbon emissions so right now um uh, indian point needs to be saved literally saved from the clutches of death uh because it already has been shut down uh this does not mean that it cannot be started up again but once they start decommissioning the plant it, it gets a whole lot worse um pulling back from that is probably going to be impossible so we have a very tight window i mean it's uh it's going to be may uh you know it's going to be may in two days uh and then uh decommissioning already starts so so it's probably too late already unless the president of the united states uh manages to you know do something but in essence uh some kind of a emergency plan needs to be made to save indian point and this emergency plan um you know it's hard because how how would you do something like this uh, from a legislative position from an executive position um you would have to talk to the proprietor uh, the owner of the plant you have to talk to to the state legislator you have to talk to um the regulator uh the department of electricity of energy i mean and you have to you, you know you have to put all your efforts into uh creating an emergency package that can save uh indian point 
and make make sure that it that it has the the uh, the means to run for at least another 20 years because that's the time that we need uh, to build new nuclear capacity together with uh, wind and solar for those who really want it um, because they're going to build it anyway so let's let's not make a fuss about it uh, they want to build wind and solar so they can build wind and solar but you need to build nuclear as well uh, not building any new nuclear capacity is just crazy so what I wanted to show you is this. Uh, suppose that you want, I mean, the only other, the only alternative at this moment is basically wind. If you want to demolish a nuclear power plant and you want to replace it with anything else, then wind is your best bet. Uh, it's sad that I have to say it, but it's true. And in some cases it might even be solar but in this case i'm going to go with wind uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how many uh, windmills of 10 megawatts it would take now 10 megawatt 10 megawatt windmills are huge these things are like 250 meters high they need to be spaced like uh, two kilometers apart from each other in order to maintain optimum efficiency you name it all that th all that stuff so what i've done here is basically I've tallied up all the numbers, um, also made sets because Byron and Dresden are basically the two, uh, the two sets that are at risk in uh, Illinois. Uh, Davis, Bessie and Perry are at risk in Ohio. Uh, we have seen an episode about that a couple of months ago. And then we have uh, Salem 1 and 2 in Hope Creek. Well, they, they are basically on the, on the same site. So... Uh, this is, by the way, this is a huge nuclear power plant in all. It's it's uh, it's really big. And then we uh, we have some other uh, Illinois-based uh, nuclear power plants. We've got Beaver Valley Palisades in Michigan, and finally Diablo Canyon, where uh, our lovely mothers of nuclear, Heather and Kristen uh, Kristen work. Um, they still have approximately three years uh, to save their plant um, so so let's let's get, let's get to the map shall we and then I can show you um, some more so this is a very interesting map um, wh what I've done is you, you see uh, two nuclear symbols on here you see yellow nuclear symbols and you see red nuclear symbols the yellow nuclear symbols are the locations where there are con combined construction licenses issued for new nuclear power plants. And in my previous video, I said, okay, choose either the AP-1000 or the BWRX-300 for these locations. If it's just one unit that you wanted to build, choose BWRX-300, space it out. Instead of building one, you build six. And if it if it were larger units, uh, simply choose a multitude of AP one thousands to replace that. Now, why these two reactor concepts, uh, AP one thousand, simply because they are building it in Vogel, and uh, they have some experience now, um, and I think I think that they should use this experience instead of trying something entirely new. We all know how that goes. Um, it's not a good idea. As for the X300, it's very simple. This is the most promising boiling water reactor uh, concept. Um, it's a small modular reactor that can be created uh, modularly. Um, you know, these are projects that take two to three years to build, cost only a billion per unit. Um, we need orders in the book in order to get the learning curve down as quickly as possible. You could, but you could also go for new scale, but new scale has to do something about their costs. At this moment, their costs are simply too high. So, um, as you see here, um, I, I put down uh, the equivalent, the equivalent amount of uh, ten megawatt mills that you would have to build to replace, you know, each of these plants. Uh, there's a couple of combined plants, but I'm not going to show you the combined uh, space. I'm, go I'm going to show you each space for each plant. So this is square kilometers. So we're talking about almost 1,100 square kilometers for Indian Point. So let's go. Um, 
we're going to zoom in to Indian Point, right? So this is Indian Point. Indian Point is a a beautiful location. These are units two and three, I believe. It's 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 arranged this way. Um, yeah, th this plant is almost is it's almost twenty one hundred megawatts and operates at uh, at uh, about ninety percent capacity factor. Now, if you would want to create an equivalent amount of energy using wind, and I have to, you know, I have to posit the caveat here that obviously these windmills would be turning, not always, and, and, and it would, wouldn't be as reliable as this plant over here. So this is not, this yellow square is not equal to this red trefoil here. But if you want to generate the same exact amount of electricity in a year, then you would need a square as big as this. If you would, you know, if you want to have reliability as well, add batteries, add whatever uh, you need to store the energy that comes out of here, uh, it would probably be one and a half times as big as it is. Now, I told you that they were building uh, natural gas plants. I have only selected one. But right over here, this is the Dover Township uh, in uh, in uh, upstate New York. Let's see if it says Dover. Uh, doesn't want to say Dover. Oh, yeah, here, Dover Town Justice Court. Now, this thing here is Cricket Valley Energy. It says Cricket Valley Energy. Now, as you can see, the layout of these things, these are clearly turbines that they are building. This is going to be an 1,100 megawatt gas fired power plant now 1100 megawatts is not that much that's only half of what indian point does plus the capacity factor for one of these is probably going to be somewhere between 50 and 60 maybe 65 percent so you're going to need at least three of these to offset the loss of indian point now gas is something that we really do not want to use to offset indian point i really and this this sounds crazy coming from me but I would rather have them build windmills than build uh, 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 three gigawatts of natural gas capacity to offset Indian Point. But they are they they are not doing this. They are doing this obviously. I mean, this plant over here. If you would, you know, if you would look at the investment, that that's probably going to be like a two or three billion uh, dollar plant that's being built right here. Now we have a couple of other interesting interesting places we're going to go to Illinois later on but what I wanted to show you is this one here so this is uh, Salem and Hope Creek as you can see they're both on the on the same uh, location this one uh, simply has a different name as this one <clears throat> so here we have uh, two pressurized water reactors here we have one pressurized water reactor I don't know what this is maybe a decommissioned pressurized water reactor because it looks you know, it looks looks like it's like it used to be another reactor. Um, so suppose that we want to replace this with with wind, the equivalent of wind, with ten megawatt uh, uh, um, windmills. Uh, that would reach up to Wilmington and go well beyond. So the president would be living, uh, uh, you know, his home state, his uh, hometown of Wilmington, uh, would be covered in windmills. Not that that is possible, obviously. You need to, to have at least, you know, 600 or 1,000 meters between a windmill and, a, and, and some building where people live. But if you look at the square, I mean, let, let's see if I, I could potentially put it over Philadelphia. And you would, need, you would need an area as big as Philadelphia, probably bigger than Philadelphia, uh, just to uh, create enough electricity uh, to offset the loss of uh, Salem and Hope Creek right over here. Uh, so, so, so if we would lose these power plants, that would be a huge loss, obviously. Now the same goes for, the, the, the funny thing is here we have Beaver Valley. So this over here is uh, Beaver Valley Power Station. It's a very interesting situation. As you can see, there's, uh, there's an, uh, I don't know, I believe it's an aluminum uh, production facility or it's iron, I don't know, some, some kind of a steel manufacturing uh, going on around there some some kind of steel 
and, and, and then there is this huge, huge coal-fired power plant right next to it. So we really don't want to lose Beaver Valley Power Station, simply because you can see already, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is this is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is using huge amounts of electricity. Uh, they they are one of the top states in terms of uh, electricity usage in all of the U.S. And they have a, a, a whole load of coal fire power plants. Um, we don't know what is going to replace these these plants once they are being demolished, once they are being decommissioned. But being coal country, it's not unthinkable that it will be coal, that they simply say, okay, we cannot get rid of coal because we just lost this nuclear power plant. And chances are very slim that, uh, Pen that, that Pennsylvania as a state with all this beautiful nature, these Appalachian mountains over here, are going to build uh, um, enough wind, you know. I mean, look at it. The square from Beaver Valley reaches over Pittsburgh. So let's see if we, we can... We, we just miss downtown Pittsburgh by a hair's breadth on that. <laughs> if, you were, if you would build windmills from here until Pittsburgh... You know, in a row, you wouldn't you wouldn't even be able to to offset the loss of this power plant. Let's see. I mean, look at it. It swallows up Pittsburgh easily. Pittsburgh is gone. If you would like to do it using wind, Pittsburgh would be gone. This is and imagine that this is each each two kilometers you would have a windmill. Now let's see. Uh, we have the, our measuring tape here. So you can see, so it's each, so this is, this is about the distance that you will get between two windmills. And the entire thing is filled with that. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. These are a couple of hundred windmills at least. Uh, let's see it. We, we can, we can see because I actually showed it. So this is Beaver Valley, right? Operations, but at risk. So you need 504 10 megawatt 10 megawatt windmills of 250 meters high or something like that you know distributed over this square you would only see if you were in the middle here or even you know at the edge you would only see windmills for miles and miles and miles without end uh let's see let's let's get my tool back okay so that's Beaver Valley. As you can see, here we have uh, Davis Bessie, Perry, uh, both, uh, both uh, under threat uh, since last year already. Uh, they were saying, give us the money or else we are going to build coal fire power plants, basically. Uh, <laughs> it, it, sometimes it sounds like an extortion scheme, you know, trying to keep nuclear power plants open means that they want extra money to make it worth their while because you know they want they want they want their profit profitability to uh, be uh, secure so so basically they're pushing the legislator to say okay here's some extra money for these power plants please don't build any coal plants or something like that if you would like to build uh, uh windmills instead for each you, you can see <laughs> It, it's it's a large surface area that you would have to build in order to replace these two plants same for palisades now luckily michigan is a huge state so you could easily you know distribute these windmills around here there's probably a lot of people who aren't going to be happy with it but who knows but now we get to the whopper and the whopper is basically illinois what you see here in Illinois is just horrendous. So over here, we've got the Byron uh, nuclear power plant. The Byron nuclear power plant is pretty large. Let me get the figures here. So the Byron is believed the biggest of the bunch. Yeah, it's 2,450 megawatts. Dresden is another 2,019. And then we've got Braidwood and LaSalle. Another, I mean... This is like, this is 10 gigawatts, just 10 gigawatts in, in, in Illinois alone. Five gigawatts in, directly in the crosshairs, Byron and uh, Dresden. 
Um, I mean, look at it. Byron and Dresden are both uh, combined producing 20% of the state's electricity output. And they they just they just want to they just want to do away with it because the profitability is not there or legislation does not want to you know secure the funds for it. Whatever is the case, it's very it's absolutely incredible that 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 people would be willing to sacrifice this plan, which is there. The plan is there and it produces loads of electricity for everyone to use but they just they just want to do away with it because it's not profitable anymore so the question is how do you how do you make this profitable again and the point here is also if you want to do a license extension you know a lifetime extension for one of these uh, power plants you will probably have to do some refurbishment and and and, and rebuild something um that's all right but it it requires uh, a, a a sizable investment and that's most that's that's probably something that these companies are not going to you know they are not going to do the investment required to to get the license the lifetime extension that is required for this power plant simply because the profitability will will be strained now there's there's another thing here so if we look at the resource mix for uh, Illinois so what we see is this um, they still have a lot of coal so the 26 percent of it is coal more than half of all their electricity comes from nuclear and then there's some wind, less than 10%. Now, keep in mind, they just, this, these are 2019 figures. In the meanwhile, stuff might have, might have changed. But if they would close down Dresden and Byron, this would drop by half. So instead of producing 50% of the state's electricity using clean air nuclear, uh, they would only produce somewhere around 25 to 30 percent of the state's electricity uh, using nuclear and what you would see is you would see is a, a shift either they would use more coal they would use more gas or they would use more wind but in order to jump you know from 53 percent let's say you cut half of it let's say you cut 25 percent and you would add 25 percent here that's what you get this is what you get you would get these squares and believe me let's see if this is dresden uh this is la salle uh this is braidwood didn't i put dresden on the map what's that oh i forgot to put dresden on the map well, in any case, you would get two of these squares, two of these squares. So there should be a square, another square somewhere around here. Uh, uh, maybe it's near Peoria. I don't. I, I can't recall at this moment. Out, out, out of the out, out of the top of my head. Um, yeah, but th this is this is a sizable problem, as you can see. And then we have Diablo Canyon, uh, Diablo Canyon replacing that with wind. Um, the funny bit is that if you look at the total wind production in California already, um, it's still only 6%. They get most of their electricity from hydro and uh, a sizable amount, well, sizable, uh, uh, quite a lot from, uh, from, from solar. So if you look at, you know, wind 6.81% and... Uh, what 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 they essentially would be doing is doubling this. So they have this. By the way, this is this is crazy. Just just <laughs> this is this is the this is the evo. No, this is the yeah. 
Uh, this used to be one of the largest solar power plants in the world. Uh, this is the, yeah. Normally I would be able to tell you what it is, but now I can't. In any case, um, the Topaz, Topaz PV plant. So even the Topaz PV plant with just 25 square, kilometer, square kilometers would be dwarfed, dwarfed by the wind park required to offset the loss of Diablo Canyon. Now, I didn't plan this. This is, this is crazy. This is just simply crazy that you would see the Topaz PV plant, one of the largest PV plants in the world, at least for years. Now, now, it's, now it's getting beaten everywhere. Um, and what is required to, 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 to replace it? So basically, here is my call to action. I mean, if failure is not an option, these plants must be saved because these plants are reliable and provide electricity without C2 emissions. So the question is, what can you do to save these plants? Um, you know, from my perspective, I'm, I'm a Dutch guy. I'm, I'm actually, you know, meddling in stuff that is not, 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 you know, it's not my place to meddle in these things. But on the other hand, climate change knows no bounds. If you can see a problem and you can, you can enunciate clearly what is happening and enunciating for me is quite hard because I stutter and you can hear it all the time. I have a different stutter. I always hang up <laughs> between my words. But in any case, um, what could you do? I mean, you need, to, you need different, you need saving these plants is a matter of uh, policy. You can save these plants by policy alone, actually. That's what I think, because because you need to take into account a lot of different things. But it's not up to you to 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 come up with all these things. You can do it and then talk to your, rep to your representatives. Um, but I would suggest to talk to your representatives and local, state and country legislators about uh, proposing policy that will save these plants uh, some 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 plants need more help than others at this moment, especially in the end point. That's that's a real emergency. Um, what you can do when talking to these representatives is explain that these plants are probably being replaced by natural gas plants, and if worse, maybe even uh, coal fire power plants in in, in 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 the Ross Belt, for instance. And this is very bad for the environment. So. What I would urge you to do is basically go to uh, Generation Atomics website. There's also a website called uh, Protect These Plants. Um, you could you could also go to the Anthropocene Institute, and um, you know if you really want to do something about this, uh, you have to mobilize. You have to write to representatives. You have to start talking and, and really make this an issue. Keep it on the agenda, especially for you for those people like, like like in Byron. Let's let's get back up, uh, like in Byron. I mean, look at it. This is the this is the nuclear power plant. This is a very rural area. Uh, I bet you that the play people who live in Oregon, in Mount Morris, in Byron itself, um, these communities these communities absolutely massively. Uh, benefit from the existence of this nuclear power plant and I doubt whether they would benefit as much from a equivalent uh, volume of uh, wind uh, producing energy in the same state sure you would need a lot of maintenance guys to get this done but if you look at the parking lots at these uh, <laughs> at these windmills I mean you can only see one or two trucks standing there and doing their work and there's not a lot of maintenance trucks out there so this here is the best employer bar none in the region just look at the just look at the parking space um yeah you need to save these plans uh get talking to your representatives thank you all for watching and have a nice day bye bye